Next, from Springfield, Governor Rauner speaks among a panel of education administrators as he encourages increasing the number of apprenticeship programs and vocational schools. This runs about 15 minutes. Thank you so much for your leadership and your advocacy on this important issue, for just workforce development in general, but especially the apprenticeship. As, as Alicia said, I am a very strong believer in apprenticeships. And obviously we do apprenticeships around the state in various ways and various levels. Um, but I want to see if we can't become the best state for apprenticeships in the country and do it on a more integrated, more expanded, more coordinated basis and just really maximize the impact. And to me, this is part of um, a developing skills in our young people, in, our, in our, adult, our early adults, so that they can maximize their potential, and part of bringing vocational training and technical training into our education system, starting even earlier than we've been doing, starting at, you know, when, uh, at the beginning of high school, et cetera, and making sure we've got an outstanding track for college prep, professional prep for those students who want that track, but making sure we got an outstanding track for people who don't necessarily want to become a doctor or a lawyer, but want to have a great career as a technician, as a, in the, in the various skills uh, that we can, we can create through vocational training and through apprenticeships. And I'm a strong believer that there's no better training, no better learning that, than the hand-on, hands-on, real experience, uh, work combination with education and training. Um, it's the reason that we formed the Governor's Cabinet on Children and Youth in, in large part to bring that sort of education and training to the young people of Illinois. We made it one of the signature projects for the, the Children's Cabinet is, is apprenticeships. And we appreciate your, the coordination with your team, your group here. You guys have been great partners and allies in, in this work. And if we do it right, we can have a seamless apprenticeship program starting with mid-teenage years going all the way through um, for adults as well. And we can maximize the impact for the, the folks who are out in the workforce already who are in their mid-20s or even a little bit later. And we get maximize the help of the federal government on this program for helping with adults, but also um, get it for our young people in high school. So very excited about it. A um, lot of work to do. It's going to take a lot of coordination, but that's what you're achieving. And I was eager to come. I'm uh, sorry, I had to come in the middle. I would have liked the beginning. I just came from Champaign, where, again, I was meeting with school leaders talking about these types of issues. Education, most important thing we do together as a community. And I want to make sure, as we're getting a balanced budget, we're putting the resources into our education system. And uh, again, I'm an advocate for thinking about our education comprehensively, strategically, from ages zero all the way through you know, and education and training for folks who are in their 30s, 20s, 30s, and even the 40s. And we did think strategically kind of cradle to career and career advancement, not just K to 12 schools or not just universities. Community colleges integral to this, early childhood education integral to this, and these apprenticeship programs integral to this. This is all part of our education system and all, and all part of enhancing the uh, quality of life and the income potential and the, and the family net take-home pay, which is what we all got to maximize, this is, what, this is what this is about, and, and you guys are doing it. So I'm excited to be here. I want to thank you. I look forward to listening and participating a little bit before I need to go on to the next thing. Thank you very much. Do we open the floor up for uh, if there are some comments or questions that anyone has? Speaking of education, Governor, um, and you mentioned community colleges. I work at the community college board here, so, of course, that, that's really an area that we're um, concerned about and focused upon. Um, can, would you mind sharing a little bit of your vision of how community colleges fit into this apprenticeship equation, kind of where you see community colleges here? Um, absolutely. So um, for the last five years, I've been traveling the state, learning and listening and learning um, on what we're doing in education. Education is my personal passion. It's, it's my wife and I have had this passion for, together for 30 years. Um, she's focused primarily on early childhood education, making sure that, that our very youngest people um, are given the educational opportunities they deserve when they're two, three, four, five years old, when their brains are first developing. Too, too often in Illinois and around America, especially for lower income communities, childcare has no education component. 
And in fact, child care, good child care is regarded as strap a child in a car seat and turn the TV on. That is institutionalized brain damage. I mean, this is, it's, it's, to me, it should be criminal. I mean, it's, it's outrageous. Low-income kids, you can't learn when you're two years old. You can't acquire the skills, the brain development to, to uh, enhance, have your full intellectual ability if, you're, if, it's, if your interaction is television. It just doesn't, doesn't happen. And that's been done to young people growing up with disadvantaged backgrounds for, for years. And that's got to change. And we need adult interaction. We need learning, reading, counting, looking in the eye, speaking. So these young people are fully developed. And it's amazing that the data is clear when they have that opportunity when they're young. They get to first grade and they're ready to thrive. My passion has been K-12 education. And it's the reason that I ran. I don't, you guys, most of you may know this, Illinois is the worst state in America for state support to K-12 schools. We give the lowest percentage support for education spending K-12 of any state in America. Hello. I mean, good grief. This is so wrong. This is just fundamentally wrong. And as a result, we have the largest gap between what high-income K-12 schools, high neighborhood, uh, um, high-income neighborhoods get for their schools, K-12, versus what our lower-income neighborhoods get K-12 schools. Biggest gap in America. This is wrong. This denies the American dream to young people whose, whose parents maybe don't have as high an income as others. But they deserve exactly the same quality of schools and the same level of support. And we've got to change this. And we're in the middle of the political <laughs> a, uh, battle, is a nice term for it, about how to change that. But as part of it, we've got to spend more. We've got it. We just have to put more money into the system from the state. To do that, we need a balanced budget, okay, K to 12. High school, when I travel the state, what's clear to me, the really thoughtful communities, what they've done is form partnerships between the local high schools, the local community college, and local employers. They talk with the local employers. What are the skills do they need? What's the workforce they're looking for? How, what, what are the opportunities? They integrate that and coordinate that with the local community college and with the local high schools, and you know, they're getting course credit for, for work being done at the community college and in the high school and, and joint credit, and then they're also doing apprenticeships and work, they're, they're taking classwork at the local employer, and it's all integrated in a seamless system. I think it's awesome. I think it's a, it's a great way to go. This, you, you guys may see ways to enhance that or change it or make it better. That's terrific. I mean, that's to me what it's all about. But what's clear to me is I've traveled around the state. Rockford does some, Northwest Suburbs of Chicago. Uh, there's other communities that are doing it. We, we need to refine it, hone it, improve it, and take it to full scale all over the state, in my opinion. <coughs> and you may see other better things that we should be doing or ways to do that better. But it's clear to me, community colleges are a core partner in that process. Vocational training, apprenticeships, education, classroom work, in partnership with employers and high schools. Governor, that's the perfect segue to <laughs> um, uh, talking a little bit about the community college system. You know, we celebrated our 50th anniversary as a system uh, just recently. And so we'd like to present you with this oh, awesome. Thank um, you. shirt <laughs> that commemorates our 50th anniversary. Oh, awesome. All right, it's, it's even long enough I can wear this and not have it tucked up. <laughs> that, that <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, congratulations. Mr. Dave, when I was 50, and we have, we have a pin as well, so you can wear on days when you're a little more formal. Very kind. Well, I look forward to wearing that with pride, and I look forward to being a strong advocate for our community college system. It's key to a high quality of life and higher incomes for everybody in Illinois. Right. We. Good afternoon, Governor. Um, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm Alba from National Latino Education Institute and the chairman of your Latino Commission. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I'm so happy that you're championing this for Illinois. It's very important. Um, everyone's sitting at the table representing different sectors of the state and different industries. Um, I, I think values even more uh, how important um, this is for the state and for the economy. Um, my question is, in terms of looking at a seamless system, which is, which, which is the way it should be, um, you visited the National Latino Education Institute, a private, nonprofit, technical and trade school 
servicing specifically economically disadvantaged Latinos. And so you met with a lot of Latino students um, focusing on um, a variety of technical skills and training and getting into the workforce and working with the private sector. And so um, sometimes it takes a, uh, a different type of approach um, using cultural approach to be able to serve those who are most underserved. And so that takes some creativity and innovation. And so as you're looking um, to a seamless system and you're open to creativity and innovation, I just wanted to, um, first of all, remind everyone that um, there is, there are, there is a, a very underserved population that sometimes gets lost in the traditional system. And so um, putting focus on a new way and an intentional way to ensure that all Illinoisans access these pathways is very key. So just wanted to bring that awareness. There are a number of foundations that are actually on the phone, the Joyce Foundation, the Funders Alliance. What do you think the role that foundations can play as it relates to supporting our efforts um, going forward? Well, uh, I want to thank uh, all the members of the philanthropic community who are on the phone or with us here and also just around the state. One of the reasons that Illinois is such a wonderful place is because we have such generous citizens and residents. And, and um, I, I personally believe that um, there's a major role for philanthropy to play in this. It's a partnership across um, government, across uh, businesses, across education uh, organizations and, and the, um, the private sector, the philanthropic community and the business community just in general. This is going to be a big partnership to get it done. Um, what, what brought me into the education sphere was um, my work through philanthropic organizations originally back 30, 35 years ago. I didn't inherit any money. My grandparents lived in a double wide trailer, but my grandfather taught me hard work, um, the value of an education. He didn't speak much English, and he said, Bruce, get a good, get a good education. You've got to learn English. It's a big problem if you don't. And the third thing for him is he said, we have a moral duty to help each other. You give back in the community. And I, those are his three rules, hard work, education, and giving back. And I believe, as the, as, the, as the Bible says, to whom much has been given, from whom much is expected in return. Um, many of us in Illinois have thrived because we've been blessed because we've grown up. I grew up and I've lived here my whole life, done well, worked hard for teachers. And uh, as I told my six kids, you know, I'm not taking it with me, and uh, I'm not giving it all to you. Uh, we're, 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 uh, two of them were not too happy about that, I'll say. Um, but we're, so what got me uh, very involved was I wanted, education was always my passion, so we started uh, funding teacher training and principal development and school choice and scholarships for low-income kids and early childhood education. And I saw what the Im impact of other philanthropists could be coming together on a joint basis to drive a particular issue and make a difference. And I know in apprenticeships, I know in community college employer partnerships, philanthropy can play a major role. And I want to applaud the philanthropists who are interested in this, involved with it, and encourage everyone to come together and, and really push this out. This can really move the needle for rising family incomes, higher incomes for all the, uh, the people in Illinois, and a higher quality of life. Are there any other questions? That's it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Um, we do have a presentation coming up from this and Krupp, an advanced manufacturing youth apprenticeship program they're going to be presenting. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent right. nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.